Hello everyone and welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 build guide. Today I present to you the Arasaka Enforcer. This is a very well-rounded, balanced build combining high damage and high defense with a lot of functionality. It is an improvement on my Corporal Agent build using attributes and perks in an extremely efficient and effective manner. You'll have the quick hacking and breaching skills to shut down security systems, a silenced revolver to pick off enemies from stealth, an assault rifle to mow down groups in mass, and a katana to dice up anyone foolish enough to get into melee range. All three of our weapons crit 100% of the time, which causes them to apply massive short circuit damage on every hit and send more sparks flying than an 80s metal group. Let's start off with the appearance. I will run very quickly through the appearance of this character. Don't worry if you miss it, I will put the appearance settings in the description below. Now let's look at the clothing used in this build so you can complete the appearance. For this build, we are not using crafting so we will be finding everything. You can get epic dress shoes from a various clothing vendors, just grab any of them that you like. There are legendary shoes available, but I can't be bothered with doing the long quest chain to get them. However, if I were doing a serious full playthrough, I would do the I Fought the Law quest so I could get those legendary dress shoes. The jacket is found here. The pants are found here. The net running suit is found here. The eyepiece is found here. Now, can I just take a moment to say how disappointed I am that this game has so many amazing hairstyles, yet every headpiece either covers them or ruins them completely? Even if you wear a bandana, it just changes your haircut into something generic and there's no option to disable the view of the hat. So yes, for the screenshots, I took my hat off, but I do have a legendary hat that I wear when I'm playing, which I found here. It fits the rest of the look pretty well, but I like the look much better without it. Overall, I'm happy with the way the character turned out. He's a nice blend of samurai, cybertech, and suave corporate. For the mods, we need one immunity to shock mod as we won't have enough technical ability to grab the perk. We can save a perk later if we get the Panacea Legendary mod with both immunity to shock and poison. I also use a single Fortuna and Bully mod for 15% crit chance and 30% crit damage respectively. The Deadeye mod still isn't working at this point. I also include the Predator mod, which is designed to help with boss fights. Who knows if it actually works or not. Fill the rest of the slots with the best Armadillo mods you can make. The recipe for the Armadillo mod is found here. For the weapons for this build, we are not depending on crafting, so the best option is generally to purchase legendaries from weapon vendors. This is the best option for a few reasons. First, most iconic weapons are found as rare, meaning they need to be upgraded to legendary to be effective, which you can't do without crafting. Second, you can buy legendaries from vendors anytime you want. So for example, you can buy this legendary DR5 Nova early in the game in Kabuki Market at level two. And then you could come back again and buy it later and its damage will be based on your character level at that point. This means the final form of these legendaries are purchased when you are level 50. Also note that the legendary will re-roll every time you wait 24 hours. So if you don't see the stats you're looking for, re-roll and try again. For our primary weapon, we'll be using a katana. There are lots of really nice iconic katanas, but none of them are legendary when you find them. So the one purchased from Coach Fred will be the best choice. Be sure that it has around 60% crit chance when you purchase it. The next weapon we'll get is our revolver. 
There are two to choose from. The first is the DR5 Nova that you can purchase in Kabuki Market. It actually has the highest headshot multiplier at 6. However, I ended up going with the Overture purchased in the southern part of Arroyo. It has a slower attack speed, meaning each shot will hit higher. Plus, it looks way cooler. Finally, we'll use a smart assault rifle, which will help us with wrecking large groups of enemies from afar with the fun spray and pray playstyle. The legendary Sidewinder can be purchased from the weapon shop vendor at the Sunset Motel. These three weapons combined with our heavy investment in quick hacks will give us a ton of versatility to handle a variety of combat situations. For mods, be sure to use the critical damage mods as our crit chance should be well over 100 at this point. Next, let's look at the build. As usual, I will explain the starting attributes, the attributes at level 50, and the perks that we will aim for as they become available. Though I'm showing you the end game perk tree, which will not only require you to be level 50 but also to max out every skill, I'll focus specifically on the perks that should be taken as early as possible. To start his journey, V will have 3 body, 6 intelligence, 5 reflexes, 5 technical ability, and 3 cool. Our stats at level 50 are 20 in intelligence, 16 in body, 16 in cool, 14 in reflexes, and 5 in technical ability. Let's start by looking at our primary attribute, which is intelligence. Intelligence is set to 20 because anything less than that is kind of meaningless. Intelligence is an interesting attribute as it's pretty much all or nothing. Most of the perks are either tremendously useful or nearly useless depending on your build. If you want to use quick hacks for damage, you'll need at least 16 in intelligence, which gives access to the perk critical error allowing your quick hacks to crit. You should also ideally want to be able to craft legendary quick hacks which requires 20 in intelligence. Sure you could partially incorporate quick hacks with some efficacy but why bother when you could throw on a berserker or a sandivistan operating system to improve your main damage sources more and completely eschew quick hacking and breaching altogether. I modeled this playstyle for the build after the Arasaka agent you encounter during the Corpo prologue and his ability to wreck your world with just a flash of his eyes, so of course a heavy investment into quick hacking and breaching makes sense. For a very hard playthrough I would recommend getting intelligence to 20 as fast as possible which is actually by level 15. For breaching, your top priority is getting Data Mine Virtuoso, Head Start, and Compression as soon as you hit 20 Intelligence to allow you to farm Quick Hacks more effectively. Also, put a single point in the perks that open up new daemons, such as Big Sleep, Mass Vulnerability, Turret Shutdown, and Turret Tamer. These will help you shut down security systems, allowing you free reign to dominate unhindered. For quick hacking, critical error will be a priority, but it will only be especially effective when you start getting more base critical chance from mods, cyberware, and other perks. Other than that, be sure to grab I Spy to improve quality of life, and both ranks of Subliminal Message for double damage to unaware targets. Also get the crafting related perks as quick as you can to improve your quick hacks. Your top priority is upgrading your short circuit quick hack to legendary as soon as possible, as the passive ability is what turns you into Chris Hemsworth. Your technical ability will start at 5 and it will remain at 5 at level 50. One important note is the reason I tend to put 5 into technical ability right away at the start of the game even on builds where I don't intend to focus on crafting armor and weapons is because it opens up the ability to craft rare consumables and grenades. The investment of just 2 points to open rare crafting is much lower than the jump to 12 points needed for epic crafting or 18 points needed for legendary crafting. Quick note, this is me from the future. Uh, in the original script, I intended to mention that having the rare perk would allow you to craft rare armadillo mods. I assume that you needed the epic crafting perk to get the epic armadillo mods. 
However, when testing on this playthrough, it turns out the epic armadillo mods will appear even with no investment in the crafting tree. The only thing that matters is your character level. Most people hit this threshold at about 34 or 35 and they start seeing epic armadillo mods then. So investments in the technical ability and crafting will have no bearing on the powerful armadillo mods or even the other common weapon mods like crunch and penetrator. So when you're deciding whether or not to invest in crafting, the mods shouldn't play any role in that because they're not affected by your crafting ability at all. Hopefully that makes sense. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what? How high are you? So uh, now back to your regularly scheduled program. In the engineering tree, we gain access to two quality of life perks which help our grenades when we choose to use them. Overall, I would say that these two tiny attribute points end up providing a huge benefit from start to finish regardless of the focus of our build and definitely deserve my efficiency seal of approval. Speaking of efficiency, my last two guides have pointed out that having cool at 11 is very efficient, opening up two vital perks, the headshot damage perk from the cold blood tree and the immunity to poison perk in the stealth tree. However, this guy is just too cool to sit at 11. The great Azal pointed out in my comment section of the last video that putting more points in cool not only unlocks some nice perks, but also opens up the use of the very valuable defensive cyberware called the Pain Editor. Based on that, we brought Cool up to a new threshold of 16, and we spent a lot of perks in the Cold Blood Tree in an attempt to keep the valuable Cold Blood buff up throughout the fight. Our top priorities in this tree are the aforementioned Frozen Precision perk for headshot damage, and a single point in the Cold Blood passive perk, which allows us to earn valuable skill rewards from Cold Blood. The Stealth Tree also got a lot of love from us this time around, with investments that both help us outside of combat with our silenced pistols and quick hacks, but also once we are discovered. However, of course, our priorities are the aggressive antitoxins for poison immunity, although once you have the Panacea mod, you don't need this anymore, and the Assassin perk for 15% extra damage to humans. Now, let's move on to body. To be honest, since discovering the Second Heart Cyberware, I really struggle to justify putting any less than 16 into body. This thing is just so darn good. Essentially, you're doubling your survivability with a single piece of gear. It restores you to full life when you die. It's auto life from Final Fantasy. It's the Warlock Soul Stone. It's the freaking Phoenix rising from its ashes. You are dead! I saw you die! I was faking. I used ninja focus to slow my heart rate down. With 16 in body, we'll get several key perks in athletics. First, be sure to put 3 points into invincible to increase your health pool by 30%. Grab pack mule for a nice boost to carrying capacity. And steel and chrome to increase our damage with our katana. Annihilation has a ton of great offerings for any build. Although we aren't using shotguns, we'll still get a lot of benefits from the perks here. First, grab Manic and Momentum Shift to increase your movement speed and then Speed Demon to do extra damage based on your movement speed. This makes our katana playstyle extremely fun, darting around the battlefield, slicing and dicing our enemies like future trunks. There is nothing in Street Brawler that will benefit our build, so we won't be putting any points there. Finally, let's look at reflexes. It may seem really strange that although our primary weapons are all three from the reflex-based trees, we only put 14 points here. However, to be honest, we don't really miss out on a lot. We get most of the really important perks with just 14 points here, and the few sacrifices we made with the lower reflexes paid dividends in the other trees. From the assault tree, we'll prioritize executioner, covering kill shot, and named bullets. From the handguns tree, Wild West is by far the most important as it allows us to use our pistols as a sniper rifle. This synergizes with long shot drop pop, also prioritize Rio Bravo and fistful of Euro dollars. I found katanas to be the most fun and most efficient killer for this build. 
There are a lot of perks here to support katanas. Offensive defensive triples your damage on defensive attacks, which are achieved by holding block and then pressing attack, sending you backwards as you swing. Though to be honest, I can't tell if this actually works because of the strangeness of the damage numbers. It doesn't really look like it is working, so take it if you want. Float like a butterfly also gives you a boost when you dodge, meaning that you should try to incorporate a dodge every 5 seconds for a constant 50% increased damage. Blessed Blade and Sting Like a Bee should also be prioritized. For cyberware, rather than telling you the location of each piece, I just recommend traveling around to each of them and snagging up the best stuff. Among them, the most important stuff for this build are the Limbic System for 25% increased crit chance, Visual Cortex support for 45% increased crit damage, Second Heart and Sin Lungs for survivability, Cata Resist and Pain Editor for more survivability, and these can both be purchased from that Creep Fingers. The Immunity to Burn and Bleeding Systems will finish out our Quad Immunity, and make sure you grab any Smart Link hands because we're going to be using that Smart Assault Rifle. The Legendary Operating System we'll choose is this one, which is the uh, Mark V purchased from the Pumping Station Cyberware vendor. The only quick hack that's really necessary for this build is the Short Circuit Legendary Quick Hack. For the rest of the quick hacks, just play around with whatever you enjoy using. Finally, let's take a look at our vehicle. For this build, we'll be using the very functional and very reasonably priced Kusanagi CT3X. With everything incorporated, this is what our final stats page looks like. When we have Cold Blood at full stacks, the armor actually goes above 9,000. This is an amazingly well-balanced build designed perfectly to handle the rigors of a very hard playthrough. And that'll wrap up the build. Now that we've gone over everything, let's finish up with everyone's favorite part, that sweet gameplay montage. Everything in there is yours, and I'll transfer somewhere else in the city. The only place you're going is to the morgue. Thank you so much for watching. Every time I do one of these builds, I learn more about the game, so I'm glad you're joining me for this journey. Be sure to like and subscribe for more efficient content. Leave a comment below with any kind of build you're looking forward to in the future. And remember to survive in Night City. You gotta be efficient. Uh, give me a break. Mercs have a code of ethics now? I do. <laughs> <laughs>